This video is brought to you by fishhuntshoot.com. For more and bigger trout, go to fishhuntshoot.com. Here we go, we got one running on the far shore over there. Anytime you think you got him, give him the business. Oh yeah, you got him. You have a uh, Gary piece, but he's big. Nice one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, that's a nice fish. I like that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Woo. Beautiful. Howdy, guys. Cal here. I am out at Collins Lake and I am scouting for trout. Um, I've got guide trips the next couple days and we are coming off a series of very significant storms. Um, the lake level's up about 12 feet here. The water is highly stained. It's full of organic matter. Every little gully here has an inflowing creek in it. Um, maybe we have probably 18 inches of visibility and we have a significant temperature drop from when i was here three days ago um the temperature is down about three degrees at this point and uh, all that adds up to lethargic hard to hook fish and they're hard to hook for a couple reasons one they're lethargic but two they have a hard time finding your bait now i've kind of dialed in the areas that are holding fish the fish are shallow and they seem to be in these coves that have inflowing water and i'm just kind of moving in double anchoring and kind of exploring some depths and i've had a good deal of success doing that but to draw strikes you have to be using a high scent bait with a large profile um the scent helps the the fish find the bait in this in this super stained water the large profile helps the fish see the bait and also a large profile bait when you're dealing with sluggy sluggish fish it, it gives them something worth their while to go after you know a lot of times when fish are sluggish they're not going to go for little tiny baits they want a substantial meal if they're going to make the effort of moving towards it and consuming it so let me show you a couple of baits that i use that i consider you know high scent large profile baits and you might want to use these the next time you're out trout fishing and you're dealing with a temperature drop and stained water so number one on this rod right here using my standard kind of power bait setup egg sinker a swivel fluorocarbon leader um in this case an eight pound leader and a number eight uh laser sharp octopus hook pretty standard stuff this one i'm gonna bait up with a piece of a night crawler and some power bait here's how i'm gonna do that i'm back um i'm using chartreuse green garlic scent power bait so i'm gonna put this on my leader first and i'm going to put it you know kind of below the hook a little bit and i'm going to use I, I usually advocate a pretty small piece of power bait but in this case i'm going to use a fairly large piece and i'll just stick that bottle in my pocket there so here is my power bait i'm using a ball probably real close to a half inch in diameter so let me attach that to the hook and leader i've got to leave a little hook point exposed to get that worm on so this is going to put out that garlic scent combined with the power bait scent i'm just going to pull the leader and the hook into that ball of power bait and then i'm going to smash it on my line pretty well it doesn't have to be perfectly round in fact it doesn't have to be round at all but what i've got there i've got a pretty large piece of power bait with a hook protruding from it so i'll set that down and i have well, I have over here a night crawler somewhere. I guess that one escaped. I'd gotten one out of the can, but I can get another one. Oh, there he is. He was he was flattened out on the lid. There's my worm. So I'm not going to use a very large section of the worm. I'm going to use about a one inch section, about like that. I'm going to rip off the head end of the worm. This worm's going to add to the profile of the bait. It's also going to add some movement to the bait, and of course, it smells like a worm. Combine that with the power bait scent and the garlic. I'm putting out a lot of scent. I've got some motion. I've got some real meat there. I've got something that uh, a trout is going to have a hard time passing up once they locate the bait. Now, obviously, that is a large bait, and I'm dealing with sluggish fish. So when I get a fish going on this, I'm going to have to open a bail. I'm going to have to let that fish swim for a significant amount of time. But uh, I've caught hundreds of trout on a uh, 
nightcrawler power bait combination like that you just got to give the fish time to take it and it can be really deadly in stained cold water let me kind of finish finish dolling that bait up there and we'll move on to our other bait which is going to be a garlic power bait and marshmallow combination so that's all set up there let me grab my other rod right here running the exact same setup same leader um, on this one I have a, a bullet weight but the same deal you set this down here you grab my marshmallows right here I'm using these bright pink marshmallows these have scent on them they also have some glitter on them so they're just adding to the attraction of the whole rig what I'm gonna do first I'm back what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my hook take my marshmallow and I'm gonna go right through the center of that marshmallow and pull the hook all the way through the marshmallow so that, so that the marshmallow is actually it's down on my leader see that that marshmallow is going to float up just like the power bait it's going to give it extra flotation extra scent and an extra large profile so here's my power bait it's in my pocket I'm using that same garlic green power bait i teamed with the uh with the worm and this is a combination that's been working well today so yeah under there Roll that into a ball, just like that. Hopefully I didn't hook myself in the sleeve of the jacket when I stuck the, the leader under there. Nope, didn't do it. Awesome. So I'm going to apply that power bait to the hook, just like I ordinarily would. Put the ball on there, kind of thread it on like a salmon egg, and then squish the power bait around the eye of the hook. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that marshmallow down against the power bait. I'm going to push the the eye of that hook into the marshmallow a little bit. I'm going to clean it up, form it up right there. I have a large profile bait that's putting out a lot of scent. There's a lot of glitter on it. It's something that the trout can see, something that they can smell, something that they can zero in on. And much like the worm bait I showed you previously, you know, when you get a fish going on this, they're sluggish. They're not just going to grab it and go tearing off. You're going to have to open the bail. You know, the bite might, the bite can't even talk. The bite might go on for a minute or two minutes or three minutes. Be patient and don't make your move until you are absolutely certain that that bait is well back in the fish's mouth. After that, man, it's all that hero stuff. You're going to yell fish on, get me the net, wet my reel, all that kind of stuff. And that fish is going in the box and ultimately he's going to end up on the dinner table. I'm Kel Kellogg. Keep this stuff in mind next time you're out dealing with stained cold water and you want to put a mess of trout together for the table. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'll catch you later.